Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is November 26th, 2023. Uh, happy birthday to my mom. She has hey. a birthday today. I, she's not watching, but you know, just, just in case. <laughs> Mama, I don't know. How was your Thanksgiving, Howard? Good, the kids are here. Yeah, I ate a lot, did some biking. Um, got a minor miracle. What we got like 26 maybe today if they don't fuck around. My hearing note another 13 hostages, 26 hostages released. Good, it's a good weekend. Yeah, the uh, let's uh, the shorts are held hostage here. What do you think? I'm sorry. Short short sellers are being held hostage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, it was a short market week, but even though we saw an attempt, an attempt for a breakout after this tight range consolidation here in the in the queues and the uh, spies, uh, but mm -hmm. it didn't really uh, went anywhere, which is it's not a big surprise considering that huge move that. Uh, we've had since uh, end of October, just mm -hmm. a straight line up, uh, lockout rally, everyone that was waiting for like a tiny 3-5% pullback to get in, didn't get it. So now that it's back near 52-week highs, uh, it's I think it's normal to see some back and forth, some at least sideways consolidation. So... Uh, it would be curious to see if small caps will try to catch up since we're seeing this tight range consolidation right near the 200 day moving average. So if we see the Russell 2000 really go above it and start to trade above it, I think we will see much bigger, much faster movers um, because small caps in general, they, they move faster uh, than the large caps, even though this year large caps have done so well. Anything from NVIDIA to uh, Facebook and Amazon and Google and Microsoft. Speaking of NVIDIA, they reported earnings. And as expected, they completely crushed earnings estimates. I mean, look at these numbers, 200% sales growth, 600% earnings growth. Mm -hmm. But what what's matter, matters more right now is that is the market reaction, obviously, the market was expecting these numbers. This is why we mm -hmm. saw this 25% rally mm -hmm. um, in the past three, uh, three weeks or so. And now it's mm -hmm. probably consolidated. I would assume the pullbacks to the 20 day, maybe 470, 460 will be bought as it consolidates for a potential breakout. But another point that I wanted to make is that I remember some people were uh, commenting at the beginning of the year when... Uh, and video was gapping up on earnings and they were wondering why is it gapping up since pointing out the negative earnings and sales growth, but the market is forward looking. The market looks mm. 12 months ahead of time and expects different numbers. The market doesn't trade based on the past. It trades based on expectations. Mm -hmm. And in this specific case, the expectations turn out to be correct. And just in video continue to, uh, report strong numbers and uh, and make new highs. Yeah, I will. I will. It's a good, really good point. Looking back there, at when they were negative, and now it's six hundred percent growth. I think we were talking on trends with friends that the most likely outcome was a gap and go. And sure enough, that's not the outcome that we had. I sold some puts, which everybody was making fun of me, but I'll collect on those because the premium are so high. I think. I think the options kind of controlled this one. People didn't want to pay $500. So there's just a lot of options that are going to have to expire for the next move to really happen. Um, but but I think the the most important point about AI after what, what we talked about the last few weeks is the secular trend is on. Just like we're going to be talking about e-commerce for 20 years, right? COVID sped it up. You, you're going to see that um, the war speeds up AI and, and, the, and the settlement, you know, AI fixing its its board will speed things up better or for worse. Uh, I'm not going to comment, but it's going to speed things up. So 
So AI just gets faster and faster. So so we've gone from, I was saying to the guys, there's been really three secular, I guess you could call mobile four. You've got the internet, you have the mobile internet, you have e-commerce, and now you have AI. And we can talk about wiggles and quarterly earnings announcements, but the secular trend in the NVIDIAs and the competitors is what matters. Positioning yourself to catch this wave, which is, you know, why I've always done QQQ over SPY. I, the odds of me being able to pick which chip maker, and a pretty big move on Intel, right? Like that's, yeah. it was left for dead. Definitely. Been left for dead. Uh, what a move. Probably the best move, one of the best moves of the year. Where, where is it on a weekly or monthly? Here's the weekly. Uh, and yeah, so you wouldn't have seen that very, very, very low base activity, and then boom, uh, pretty much a double this year. So you can see it's secular. This doesn't have to do with your pick stocks for sure, but SMH is really the new way. SMH is kind of right in there with industrials, right? The they they explain everything that's going on. Now, I'll tell you what's secondary, but still important, is XLF, which broke out like eight weeks. Eight, it's a year, eight month highs. Um, and there was a period back in March, April, we were like, well, if they, they break down, um, you know, and, and, and they were looking at breaking down a few times, that wouldn't bode well, but that trade never happened. And instead, you have eight month highs. Um, so that's <clears throat> another notch in the bull's. And again, this could be seasonal, could be hedge funds giving in and trying to chase the markets for the next two years. But hey, your job is not to, profits aren't judged by good reasons or bad reasons. You, you make money when the hay shine. And right now, a lot of line, a lot of things line up for just more strength. Uh, and we've been saying that now for a few weeks. It's like the, the jury was out, seasonally looked good. Now seasonality is playing out. Yeah. There's perfect one of the biggest walls of worry uh ha distractions happening with you know uh china visiting us the wars uh you know um the college campus nightmare you know who's running for president uh, and sure enough markets go up some individual stocks i've been looked interesting coin um i think a huge benefactor from just not going to jail um, you know, Binance yeah, gone, the only basically company from the U.S. Yeah, uh, you know, surviving is part of the game. So with Binance now basically gone, and with FTX gone, I mean, if you're going to use a, a brokerage in the United States, it's Coinbase. Um, in the drone defense space, AVAV is kind of breaking out again. I think it's an Israeli company, uh, but based in the U.S. Uh, manufacture Arlington, Virginia, but it was an Israeli company. That's pretty strong company. Not cheap, 40 times next year's earnings, but earning money. And I think we've seen this have been a drone war, uh, at least in the Middle East. We're not hearing as much about Ukraine, but obviously drones. So um, that's not a chart that looks terrible. No. Uh, Taser, another one, Axon, right on the verge of all time highs. So again, just kind of these industries that you don't normally think of, and these are all 20 bill. What's AVAB? So these are like. Uh, Let's go back to AVAB. It's 3.5 billion. So, so there's a lot of companies that are three to 5 billion on their way to 20. And then there's going to be a lot of $20 billion companies on their way to a hundred billion. Um, and, you know, that's how you can try and categorize, you know, Owning the index, but owning a few names can be interesting. Talenter looked great, but it's pulled back. You and I are along that. Yeah. Uh, not cheap, but had a had a pretty strong reversal uh, right into... It's not, uh, I mean, we should be thankful uh, for pullbacks. Otherwise... Yeah, we were saying last week, don't chase, but this may be an opportunity to uh, yeah. to add into this pullback. What else, what else did you see that was interesting? I mean, it, you mentioned e-commerce. I mean, Shopify made a, made a big move. Now probably needs time to consolidate before it yeah. uh, breaks out. I can tell you, is, I've never used Shopify more. Um, and I'm kind of a late comer 
to this. So I use Shopify the app. I was on setting up, yeah. You know. Yeah, Amazon's setting up beautifully, actually. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. But I think Shopify has just more direct juice. Um and boy, I using the back end of distance. So I was really tracking our our at one of our portfolio companies, I was really tracking Black Friday sales. And they really were up three hundred percent. So it's really interesting to use the Shopify app. And just being able to just go track every aspect of a customer journey and how much they spend and what products are moving. So it's like truly is like a dashboard into you know e-commerce. Um yeah, so is Shopify Amazon look good? What else? We've got financials. We've um, got and then some of the like price leaders like Elf, which is like a cosmetic company, uh, tested the 200 day. Now it's back above the 50, kind of going sideways. So in a good market, if we see a a, a breakout above 116, 117, we might see it like testing back 140. Okay. In a strong market, um, I mean there there are quite a few interesting looking names this one is a decent setup they report earnings though this week so it's iot yeah. makes sense to see how the markets will react platform cloudflare looked Instead interesting strong, which one cloudflare looked interesting yeah and that definitely the whole uh cyber security space uh has been on fire net is belongs to it so it's kind of setting up for potential kind of price. perking up there after a long base yes, over a year crowd or kind of i mean zs reports are new tomorrow crowd reports in a couple of days so we'll have a, co a couple strong reports in the space uh one strong earnings report from last week was um sym uh symbotic broke out on strong earnings now it's kind of going going sideways so i'm keeping an eye on this one to see if it's <laughs> Uh, it's been a big, big mover this year. Uh, it's pretty gappy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very volatile. System. But if boom, if this boom market continues, eventually we're going to see a transition from all the mega caps like Facebook and Nvidia that are yeah. moving much slower in general. And we yeah, love to... large, love large numbers, right? Eventually, people yeah. say we want to see a transition towards smaller cap. Uh, like micro caps that they can move a lot a lot faster in if this is a real bull, bull market we will see this transition at some point it's always been yeah like, let me let me share your screen just like money comes out of bitcoin can you share a screen you want to share your screen yeah quickly along okay, go ahead. can you see the small cap sectors there not yet you're not sharing it oh uh, share screen what about now yeah, we can see a small cap. Yeah. All right. So let's put this together on Coifin JC. So you can see, you know, small caps may not be having a good year, IWM, but um, here's three parts of the IWM the uh, uh, the uh, information technology, which is PSCT, is up 17%. So small cap tech is underperforming other small sectors. Cap. Uh, consumer discretionary up 25%. And then uh, information, and then uh, industrials, small caps up thirty five percent. So you know, IWM is kind of held back by banks and financials, uh, as they are in the as financials are also holding back kind of the the S and P. Um, so you can see that hedge funds, you know, have a million ways to slice and dice. So if you use Coifin, you can pull this stuff apart too, which is. You know, mostly free so if you really want to figure out try and take a shot at where the world may be heading it's very hard to bet against indexes but let's just talk about the size of indexes here's a chart here's a statement that's pretty interesting he runs an etf julian the magnificent seven have grown their collective market cap by 4.7 trillion this year that's nearly double the entire entire aggregate worth of all companies listed on the toronto stock exchange so we can make fun of other markets and say but think about it, you wake up in Canada thinking you got your work to do and the size of the magnificent sevens profit like changes here is bigger than the whole market that you cover right and Canada is not a tiny market so it just goes into what you're saying Ivan at some point people may take their money out of indexes to keep their money in the market 
in and try kind of closet indexing, which is what I recommend. I like direct indexing, which is kind of unpicking a few names. But the next the next version of what I would do would be closet indexing, where I would be, you know, if I want to be 100% long, I'd be 70% long the S&P or QQQ, and then 30% some stock picks, right? Mm -hmm. What would allow me to go find these uh, AVABs or axons that may massively outperform if if the big seven don't have the year that they're having. You know what I mean? So so I think you're going to see, like that's the way I would do it if I was running a hedge fund right now, like closet index on my bet next year, maybe the Mag Magnificent Seven may not have the same type of year. So so there's many ways. Those are the two charts that stood to me. The third one, Ivan, was uh, JC put this together is the XLF. And you can see, you know, it looks a little different than the way JC charted it here. You can see the new eight month high. So pretty healthy market overall, even with rates at 7%, yeah. or mortgage rates at 7%, but 10 years, 10 years following. And the dollar's getting weak too, and that's kind of been, you know, a factor. Yeah, definitely. So if you, the pullback, the pullback in the if you pulled up, if you pull up Latin America, and I'll, I'll switch, switch okay. the screen up and go back to you. If you take a look at ILF. Okay. If you yeah. take a look. I love take a look at I so uh... you can see it like kind of perking, but again, this is very much attributed to the dollar. Yeah, we saw um, people in Argentina, which they just had their presidential elections. Um and uh I guess the market liked the candidate that they chose. So we saw a big gap last week and a lot of the yeah. Argentine names. Yeah, be wary. I mean, he said he's going to fire everybody, and then he hired U.S. bankers to go de-dollarize. So it's like it's easy to yell one thing, like we're going to just, but in the end, it's hard to get away from old methods. So uh, I still think the best place is U.S. because we all do business. But listen, people are going, like I said, people are going to, like you said, people are going to start looking outside the comfort of just Safe being indexers. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hard to outperform the market if you're going after the Magnificent Seven. I mean, it worked this year, I guess, but they are the market already. Yeah, yeah, so, um, they are the market. And so, uh, but there are creative ideas out there. And like I said, direct indexing one and the other one is, is kind of closet indexing, but trying to uh, apply some a little bit of stock picking on top. Where are yeah. you positioned? You're probably probably cash and long here. Yeah, definitely long in cash. Like I have a few longer longer term swings, you know, like Shopify, MDB, stuff like this. And then mm -hmm. I use the rest of the capital just to trade more aggressively during the week. Okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, all right, everybody, have a great week, Ivan. Yeah, have a great week. See you next week. All right, bye. See you.